paragraph on page 55. And it goes like this. Actually, we were fooling ourselves. For deep down in every man, woman, and child is the fundamental idea of God. It may be obscured by calamity, by pomp, by worship of other things, but in some form or another, it is there. For faith in a power greater than ourselves and miraculous demonstrations of that power in human lives are as facts as old are as, are facts as old as man himself. We saw it, we finally saw that faith in some kind of God at, was a part of our makeup just as much as the feeling we have for a friend. Sometimes we had to search fearlessly, but he was there. He was as much fact of our as we were. We found the great reality deep down within us. In the last analysis, it is only there that he may be found. It, it was so with us. How's that, Paul? Great, Michael. Yes. You can stumble well, my words a little bit more, huh? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Well, one thing is, I don't believe we are actually fooling ourselves. I think something's fooling us. Yeah, but I don't believe it's us. Yeah. So I would throw that in the category of self is is uh, fooling us. Yeah. And it's it seems like a small uh, emphasis, but it's huge, really, because if it's you fooling you, then usually there'll be a reaction to that knowledge, and then you will try to stop fooling you, which turns into playing God. Yeah, it just does. And then you get stuck with that. So uh, if you can just see you're being fooled and maybe entertain it's by something other than you, there won't be any demand to stop the fooling. Yeah, because you'll see it as just recognize that which is fooling you isn't you. Yeah, it's not about starting and stopping something and then having having it start again and then stopping it again and then having it start again and stopping it again. It's getting out of that whole rotation by just meeting it in a sense with acceptance or just awareness. So, all right, you get the news. You've been fooling yourself for 20 years. Hallelujah, because it's not you that's been fooling yourself for 20 years. Oh, great. So that means, do I have to stop fooling myself? No, just tell the truth. It's not you that's fooling you. And maybe the influence it has will stop. This is how we're sharing it from here. Just like these guys are sharing it, they had this idea of a higher power of calling it God, and that was the only way for them. Yeah, And so they're presenting it as the big book of AA. Yeah, This is what worked for them. Can it work different ways for others? Yes. But this is, they were true to their experience that something greater than themselves was, was necessary to have relief from this bondage of self. Now, maybe there's other ways, but here we find ourselves in the vicinity of the program of recovery. And this program from the people who started it is based on that something other than us could do for us what we can't do for ourselves. Yeah, You want to call it higher power, God, life, it doesn't matter, but it's a recognizing of of the dilemma that resides where we are. I do wanna, I do, I do not believe we are the problem. I believe the problem has us, yeah, and is using us. And if it's foreign, then there's a possibility of being free from it. If it's you, then the, the possibilities shrink and you're gonna try to have to make it better. Yeah. And it's difficult to train a snake, yeah. It's it's just difficult. It's going to bite you probably. So my recognition is self is an activity residing in the head that presents life according to its view. And somehow or another, we fall in the act of being identified with its view. And now we live it as it's our view. Yeah. And our view seems to be a shared view. Our view sees a lot of threats when there may not be any, gets grievance, gets resentment, does a lot of things. And if you sit at an AA meeting for a while, something is going to something's going to happen where you're going to realize, how did these people get my thoughts or they're not my thoughts? Yeah. 
how do these people get my unique, very special feelings because they sound just like my feelings, yeah? So then obviously there's a suspicion in the air that if we take ourselves to be different, unique automobiles, yet we end up in the same three parking spaces, something is driving all these different, unique vehicles. One thing is driving all of us. And this is what we call self. This is the recognition on page 64. Being convinced self manifested in various ways is what has defeated us. Yeah. Now, I found great joy and relief when I saw self as other than me. I did. That's And it's still, it's the gift that keeps on giving, actually. So, and it's very clear, it's... It's a way of looking at the fourth step, which is the first working step, the first action step. And the theme is being convinced, first of all, is the requirement, what? Self manifested in various ways is what has defeated us. There's a big clue in that sentence. There's the word self and there's the word, word us. Do you believe self is us and us is self? Or does it sound like they're two different things? So being convinced self manifested in various ways where in us <laughs> is what has defeated us. We will now look at its common manifestations, which is an introduction to doing an inventory with the purpose of seeing how self has defeated you. Yeah. And it's very clearly defining the manifestations of resentment, fear and harm done to others in the pursuit of what you and I want are manifestations of self in our lives. They are not ours. And you will see the act of the disease when you read that because you're going to go resentment, my resentment, fear, my fear, acting out, my acting out. That is the bondage of self. It demonstrates in that one paragraph. Yeah, They show you the what has defeated you and then you mimic that defeat by calling self's manifestations once again your manifestations. How are you going to get out of something if you keep calling it you? It's impossible. Yes. This is the humble. We've just been preaching this for years because I didn't hear it in the meetings I went to. And I felt... It, at least you have the right to hear it and whatever you do with it or what other people do with it is up to them. I have, it's out of my jurisdiction. I'm just compelled to share it. When I saw, I had a very, very quick uh, recognition one day. I saw self as foreign to me. A possibility showed up, which is I can be free from it. Then it told me why that possibility wasn't showing up before because I was identified as it. Yeah, this is that simple. Self defeated me. How did it defeat me? By my being identified as it. Yeah, I recognize it as foreign. As soon as I saw that which has defeated me as foreign, the possibility I can be free from it became available. And so it is and so it has become. Yeah, and here I am just sharing what happened to one Jamoke in a, in a community that has a lot of suffering going on, sober or not. And uh, whatever help we can get to travel lighter, I think is worthy of being listened to for a while. Because if your way isn't working, maybe this will help. Yeah. So it's a very clear recognition. This was not passed on to me. When I did the inventory, they said, look at your resentments, your fears, your acting out. I did so. I took responsibility for it all. And when I got to the fourth column of the inventory, after a while, when I saw my role in things, I saw a huge role of self in my life. Finally, finally, finally. Yeah. And if you want the problem not to, to exist for you, it's great when it doesn't exist as you. I'm serious. There is an experience many of us are in right now or a condition which is the problem does not exist for us today. In other words, I'm not being driven to 7-Eleven right now to fucking get some fucking terrible vodka to give me some kind of relief from an unbearability 
that loves fucking eating relief. Yeah. Just keeps getting more and more unbearable. Yeah. So at this moment, the problem does not exist for me. But really, how that event establishes is if it doesn't exist as you. And you do not hate yourself. You have not defeated you. Something other than you has defeated you. And something other than you hates you. Yeah. And it's about time there's a recognition. Because many of us are, tra are carrying a huge bag of guilt and shame based on being the doer of that shit we were driven to do while under the influence. When is the forgiveness going to be available to you while you're forgiving everyone, everyone else? When is that forgiveness going to be available to you? How about now? Yeah. It's long overdue. I'm so sick of hearing it. 40 fucking years, and yet they're still walking around with a chain that can that can span 40 years to something they did when they were under the influence. Fucking insane. Talk about, you know, being held by the past. That's, yeah, so, yeah, this is the point. Everything else I read, I just see it from this view. So, where it is it? Actually, we were fooling ourselves so i believe something is fooling us for deep down in every man woman and child is the fundamental idea it doesn't have to be of god let's just say the fundamental idea of i am yes and on this so we're in the fundamental idea of i am before paul or catholic paul or buddhist paul or drug addict paul arises there's the i am that's our nature. We all share it. It's the existence of our life. Even though we rather stick with the story, it's truly based on the possibility of existing is giving us all this opportunity. So to me, that's the unsuspected inner resource. It's never left. It never comes. It's available right now, just where we are, with no requirement necessary to meet it, because we are it. And this idea of trying to become a spiritual condition as a mental condition just does not work for me. Just see you're not the mental condition and you'll find out that you're spirit. Yeah, that works for me. So here it goes. Um, it was, uh, yeah, the fundamental idea of, let's say, I am. It may be obsessed. It may be obscured by calamity. That's why we need to get sober. Yeah. It's essential for us because the greatest way the parasite disguises itself is by having us in a chaotic day every fucking day. How are you going to get to the exact nature of the wrong if you're making wrongs up every fucking day? Yeah. So we need we need to stop drinking and using a day at a time so that the next possibility becomes available to us. This is the fucking admission, like it or not. Yeah, you got to stop drinking and using. If you're a real alcoholic, who am I to say what you are? You need to know yourself. But if you have crossed that line, there's no going back, obviously. Yeah. You know. So... Yeah, it likes the calamity. It does, because it can hide easier. It may be obscured by calamity, by pomp, by worship of other things. Yeah, it's playing God. But in some form or other, it is there, exactly. But it's not in form, obviously. So it's formless. So if you're looking at it as a form, you're going to miss it. It's formless. It's not a body. And I do not believe spirit has a malady. I don't think spirituality has a malady, spirit. There's no body to get sick. It's a mental malady, which is what? An overemphasis and over-reliance on the mental state. We're trusting finite self instead of the infinite. That's all. So we got to have that shift and we can't do it. That's the admittance. Yeah, we can't. Stop trusting self. That's another form of trusting self. So we do this program 
And then the trust that was in self gets removed and moved over to trusting the infinite. And we are better for it, and the people we meet will be better for it. Yeah. So, all right, here. Uh, this is very important. For faith is a power greater than ourselves. Yes. I'm a real, I'm a real, into, I'm into faith usually <laughs> when it comes. I believe faith is a force of nature. I believe it's one of the, it's like gravity. There's faith and we just represent faith. And when you say you don't have faith, there's faith in that. Yeah. So faith is there all the time. And he talks about it again here. For faith in a power greater than ourselves and miraculous demonstrations of that power in human lives are facts as old as man himself. So what faith in a power greater than ourselves would be faith in the infinite, right? The, the dilemma is faith in finite self. And the thing is how to remove, how to move the faith in finite self to the faith in the infinite, the program of recovery. <laughs> That's how we found out, yes? Because you can't do it. It talks about it. You can't do it. Yeah. So you are, when it says no human power can do it, that includes us. This human power cannot move it. If I have, if I believe I can move the faith from self to the infinite, that's faith in self. Don't you see it? It's faith in self right there. So just tell the truth. And do this program, follow our suggestions, try to entertain the best you can the, the principle that's afforded us here. And quickly or slowly, there's going to be a migration of faith from finite self to the infinite. And it may look like you're sober now, and that urge to not be sober has been removed. Yeah, great. It may look like you're available and present to others more than you've ever been before. Yes, that, that's a good demonstration that the, the faith is now in the infinite. Now you won't be relying on yourself. You'll be relying on something other than self. And maybe instead of being obsessed today, you'll, you'll be enriched with uh, what you can contribute to this day. Yeah, yeah, there's tons of demonstrations. We have the eyes to see it. You just may need an understanding. Yeah, And this understanding is what has defeated you is not you. Is not you. Yeah. So we do the inventory. I did my fourth step. I made my amends, but I have now left the field of being responsible and I'm in the field of accountability. Yeah. My dog shit on the neighbor's lawn. I had to clean it up. I did not shit on the neighbor's lawn. My dog shit on the neighbor's lawn. I'm responsible for that dog, and therefore I have to be accountable for picking up that shit. But I do not ruminate about shitting on that neighbor's lawn for 30 years because it isn't me. It wasn't me. It's very clear. So I don't know if you if you didn't feel like you were possessed or driven or something had you or you were used for transportation or satanic fucking possession. I don't know what, but that's how it felt like to me every day. Yeah, and you're not going to, I don't care how long you sat me down, you're not going to convince me that I did that shit. You're not, because I didn't. I was driven. Yeah, it says we make decisions based on self. Does that mean it was your decision? No, it wasn't. It was a decision based on self. Yeah, self-imposed crises. Was that, did I? I imposed that crisis? No, self-imposed crisis. Yeah. Yeah. You were driven by a hundred forms. Does that mean you're the driver? If you're described as driven, let me break the news to you. You're not the driver. Yeah, you were driven, just like every other addict and alcoholic is being driven and is being driven today. Yeah. Now, my friend, instead of being driven to getting some coke, he was driven to come here. So therefore, the driver, I respect and I honor that driver that brought him here. I do. Because that thing is being, this is exactly what it is. You're going to be driven no matter what. You're going to tell the difference, you'll be able to tell the difference of what's driving you. Yeah. 
Yeah. And if you like the way you're being driven, just stay with the plan. What, what is that? Well, stay sober and be available to be of help to each other. Wow, that's heavy duty. Oh, yeah, like 5.58 a.m. at 7-Eleven with 38 cents and pennies isn't fucking uh, going to any length. Give me a break. This is such the, it's so much the easier, softer way. You can't even compare to what it is. So uh, if you get, if you break its back and you can stay sober for a period of time, you're going to get caught up in the gravity of the higher power. And I've been sober 35 years. Yeah. 35 years. I'd match my fucking calamity with anybody. I was, if they took a vote of anyone who's ever passed, you know, met me, it would have been a hundred to zero that this guy's not getting it. <laughs> There's no fucking way. Well, here you are. Yeah. I mean, I think breathing and the heart beating and taking shits is the the is the only thing I've done more consistently than stay sober. It's a long period of time in one's life. I've been under this influence a long time of this higher power. A long time. And I was under the influence of the lower power for a short time, but it seemed fucking super long. <laughs> <laughs> a hell of 15 years seems like an infinite hell. It was heavy duty. So, yeah, perhaps there's a better way. Let's get a clear understanding. Stop calling resentments yours to begin with. Yeah, please. Because how are you going to, it's like you're trying to shoo something away and then calling it back. You know, how do you get, it's, how's it going to work? Oh, I don't want resentment, but they're mine. <laughs> I don't want to have any fear, but let me talk about my fear. No, you don't see. So there is a solution. I think most pe the people in this room right now are in the solution. I know the dog is. The dog is in a complete solution. And I, I have a, I'm suspecting one of the persons here. The other one is all right. Yeah. So we're all in the solution on some level or another. And we're all being carried by the same power. Yeah. It can take as many of us as, or as little of us as there is. It's a, the weight doesn't bother it. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> yeah. So, all right, let me finish this for a second. So we finally saw that faith in some kind of God was a part of our makeup. Yeah. Don't you see? What's the first thing they say in recovery has to happen. You got to quit playing God. So hasn't there been faith in the mental God? And in this book, it's tell, it's really implying that that faith in the mental God led to our defeat. Yeah. And that faith in the infinite will lead to our recovery. It's faith. Faith is the force we represent. And, we're, and that faith is e either being directed by the lower power, let's say that what we call self, or the higher power, what we call whatever, the higher power. Yeah. But we are the faith. That's necessary. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, ba, ba, ba. we found the great reality deep down within us. In the last analysis, it is only there that he may be found. It was so with us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, Mike. Eh? All right. Thank you, Paul. That, that was great. Hey, we have a question from uh, our friend James. James, would you like to come in and ask Paul a question? I mean, not really because I'm so shy, but um, I'll do it anyway. <laughs> um, hey, Paul, I'm just so grateful you're, you're here uh, doing this. And um, I think... In the process of asking, I answered my own question, but sometimes words are important. And the disease centers in the mind, our book says. So I guess I've always been in search of the noun <laughs> behind the selfing. Like it feels like there has to be a noun <laughs> somewhere. 
And that may not be true, but if there if there is a noun behind the selfing, is it mind? Is mind the the thing that's doing the verbing of selfing? Yes, not not big M mind, small mind, conditional yeah. mental processes. That's I don't good. even like to use the word mind. I call it mental processes. Yeah, the mental process mechanically reacts to the verbing of living. And it and and responds to it with a noun called you. Yeah. And therefore the system is called self-centered, which is an apt description. So the whole system, the mental system of thinking, you know, the thoughts, the memories, the perceptions are being directed by a self-centered view. So we see everything as how it pertains to me, and that me is not you, which is incredible, eh? And we're just extreme examples of self-centeredness run wild, self will run riot. Yeah. So we, as a lab animal, we are fucking, we're in the advanced stages of uh, demonstrating how far the illness can go. And, and then the hope for the cure grows. Yeah. Yes. Like any life run on self will can hardly be a success. The word self is not just randomly thrown in there. It's very important where it's placed. It's before the will. Yeah. So self's will is what we're living instead of what we, they would call God's will. Yeah. So we're living under the guidance of self will. And they make a statement that any life run on that will hardly be a success. Yeah. And we can vouch for that ourselves. Yeah. So there's will. But there's what's going to direct the will is what's before it. So it's either self-will or God's will or higher power's will, whatever. But that's going to be the directing of the will. So the will is like a power and it, it gets directed. And right now, for many of us, we've lived under the influence of a of will being directed by self, so to speak. Yes? Yeah. And we have similar stories because... It all, it looks pretty much the same when your life is directed by self-will. <laughs> it does. Yeah. <laughs> now, there's going to be will. Yeah. The point is who, who or what's directing the will is the point. And the assumption in, re, in recovery is we've been led by self-will. And we have been defeated by self. So it's just a given that we are examples of an extreme life run on self-will. Yeah. So what would happen now? Hopefully the program will allow that little contract to be broken. And now you'll have something else that will direct you through the principles and the way of life and the design for living that we're offered. And through that, we're going to have relief from that which has defeated us. And maybe we'll have a life, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, my friend. Oh, yeah. I think everything is verbing. That's why I actually believe the act of self is selfing. Self is just a name. It's an act of selfing. So if you're ahead, if you listen to the head, it has you as a doer, a thinker, a body, yeah? You're remembered as a body, you're worried about as a body, you're thought about as a body. So the point of view of self sees you as a body, yeah? The point of view of recovery is to see us as a spirit, so to speak. We want the spiritual condition to override the mental and physical condition. And we believe, as it says there, once the spiritual condition is emphasized, uh, the spirit, the body and the mind will align with it. Yeah, it says it right in the book. So basically, we're not trying to go through the mental to reinforce and make the mental better. We see the problem resides in the mental and we're looking for a spirit solution. Yeah. So what actually happens is a diminishing of the mental condition, which is we lose interest in it. And then that interest goes to the spirit. And now that interest in spirit enriches our life. 
Yes. Yeah. Instead of doing what else the other thing did with it. Yeah. We all know what happens then. Doesn't when the mental state obsesses over something, don't you see it as a reinforcement of the identity of self? And when you're obsessing over stuff, it's almost as if you're not here. You're completely in what's not happening, so to speak. Yes? That's the dominion of self. Self loves you to be in the past and the future. That's where it plays God, literally. Yeah? It's in the present moment that you have the constant rebuttal of all that false evidence. This present moment sensing the I am, so to speak. Yeah. What does it say in the third step? You're going to feel a new power flow in. You're going to feel the conscious presence of what's actually here. Yeah? The I am. All this stuff's going to happen. You're not doing it. Yeah? Yeah? We do the program, and then these effects occur. Yeah. So this is how I see it from 35 years. I see the biggest statement in, in, in AA isn't, you know, turning your will and life over to the care of higher power. It's first quit playing God. I mean, because if you don't see that which is playing God, it's going to play God about your decision to turn your will and life over. It is, yeah? It is. And it's probably going to be a transactional surrender where if something important comes up, you'll take your life back. Yeah, because you don't you don't think God's going to get you what you want. So you're going to do it yourself. <laughs> and then you get something, all right. know how people uh i had a great story i used to do a share a, one of the hospital institution i guess everyone knows what that is well i had we'd go into a place and bring a meeting and i went in with this lady laurie and she was great because she had graduated from every program on this in this uh center yeah she had been in outpatient and indoor inpatient so she, when she shared it, it had some impact on the other people because she had been through it. And she'd always would say, she, the first time she got introduced to this place, uh, they were interviewing her and, and she said, no, it was more important to her not to lose her job, her boyfriend and the place to live. And of course, you know what they said? Well, <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> See, kept kept at it, and she lost the job, the place to live, and the boyfriend, and returned back to the program, and was malleable. Yeah, so you see, yeah, so, <laughs> and you know what? She went out again and ended up dying, and they went through her apartment, and she was dead, naked on the on the thing, overdose. Yeah. She made it to 11 years, but went back out. Yes, it was amazing. I watched her the whole time. I've been sharing with her for 11 years, and then I heard about her, and she, no, they didn't find her for a few days. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, in a weird way, if you leave this club, you may die. It's a very interesting, you know. If I leave, you know, leave an old car club i'm not probably going to die but if you leave this club it's a pretty good it may happen so i mean yeah we can be laughing a lot but it's serious it is this thing wants it wants all of you yeah 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 so yeah that was an incredible story laurie so yeah, so whatever. Where were we? Yeah, there you go, bro. Yeah, yeah thank you so much, James. Appreciate you. Uh, we have a hand up with Hank. I think I'm saying that right. Hank? Is that Hank? Yeah, I'm Hank. I thank Hank. you for, for oh, yeah. your share, uh, Paul. I was here uh, a few years ago, and you really woke me up to the Dhamma. I want to thank you for that. 
But I had a point about this uh, this mix-up from uh, me and the the um, uh, me and the ego, me and Hank say. I am an Hank, and but um, there is a, a sort of a way out. Yesterday I had a discussion with the sponsor about the fourth step he was beginning, and then we read in the beginning the story about uh, the, the the business that uh, is an inventory. And uh, and that sort of makes it clear that you can separate the two, like the I am and the, because I'm not a business, <laughs> not a shop. I'm not a shop. So this is just, uh, yeah, the result of it's all, all in the book, bro. There constantly because see, what? if it was your business, would you trust yourself to do a fearless and thorough inventory? Probably not. Yeah. No, <laughs> because you wouldn't want to. You want to hide shit. Like you bought five hundred elephant bells and you never sold any. You're not too proud of that. So you're like, let's not look at the elephant bells pants. <laughs> yes. So Thank that's you. a perfect description of doing it as a business inventory, because yeah. we're dressed in uniqueness and terminal uniqueness and personalness, and we're not looking at our defects or manifestations, I don't believe. We're looking at self's manifestations and how have they defeated us, yeah? Yeah, so you I can do- I call I call them hanking. Yeah, of course, hanking, pawling, but they're all the same, see? Yeah. Yeah, pawling and hanking are the same thing. They just have a different name on it, yeah? yeah. This is the point. The yeah. point is, uh, this idea of noun and verb, we have it just like there, just how that statement is. Just nonchalantly, I said noun and verb as if noun is before the verb. But in fact, it's verbing. Life is living. And then there's a noun that's given to it. Yeah? Yeah. That's it's biography. Hmm? My identity is a biography of claimed uh, results. Exactly. So yeah. basically, if you just observe, it's everything is in motion, everything is verbing. And we are we stuck out like a sore thumb, this idea of noun. Yeah, you don't look anything like you looked when you were two years old, or no. <laughs> even five years ago. I mean, I know people, let's say I knew when I was 17. And when I see them at 40, they don't look at all like the person I used to see. I mean, no resemblance whatsoever. Well, it's the same. So the story is, the story, it's, it's tenuous at best to try to connect and have this continuum. There isn't any. The continuum is the underlying condition of I am. That's the continuum. Everything else is broken up and goes weird and shit like that. It's not like my life has been one straight, long, uninterrupted line. That's completely bogus. And that yeah. self is a vain attempt at impermanence also. I've always been, always been like that. That's me. That's you know? right. It just goes on and on. Yes. I mean, you're just living on hearsay. Usually yeah. the mental state is playing God. It tells you, I mean, you cannot see this is a subjective event. You cannot do justice to hell when you're not in, in hell. You can't. But if you if you drink again, you're going to quickly find out what hell is like again, because you're going to have a subjective experience. You can't touch it. You can't do it justice by thinking about it. It doesn't capture it. So people, you know, I remember a lot of people, they decide to go out and they try to think of what all could happen. They never, never, never get it. Never. It just turns on them in a second. Yeah. They like have a over the next, urge the next that gracefully removed and it's driving them fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so the next experience, yeah. you cannot... If you, if you rely on living an interpretation, it has to be a deadening effect, yeah. because you can't, 
you do not know how people are feeling or their reaction to feeling. You don't. You don't. You got to be in their own shoes because this is a subjective dreaming. Yeah. So I see I see the book. I see it as a great book. Another person sees it as a doorstop. Yeah. It's yeah, it's uh yeah. So uh you're never gonna do his justice. Hell is in the living of it, man. Yeah. You can't describe hell. You can know what it <laughs> you can you feel it, man. It's unbearable. Can you imagine having that itch? The head running wild. It's already got your attention because you drank and your possibilities have now shrunk. Yeah. To such a myopic view. Either I got to go back to AA or fucking keep drinking. You're not going to. Yeah. It's yet here you are with a lot of possibility. The freedom that's been offered us by just not drinking is amazing. I mean, yeah. as soon as you drink, it shuts everything it shrinks everything it shrinks it all up and now you don't have many possibilities you know other than drinking more or or help get, asking for help to stop yes really yeah so yes yes hank that's selfing i like we used to if you want we speak from AA, so we use the term self. I don't believe there's a self. I believe the mental state is selfing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's the mental state revolves around an idea that you're a noun and and it interprets all the verbing from that idea. Yeah. yeah? And it's not gonna learn because it's a program. Yeah. It's not AI, it's not growing. It believes you're a noun, and that's that. Yeah. And so if you're going to spend a lot of time and money trying to rehab it, it has a ceiling. It cannot go that far because of the program. It just can. Yes. It's looking through self-centered lenses. And no matter how many glasses you put after that, the self-centered lens is going to win out. Yeah. So this is a loss of interest in that system, not a changing of the system a loss of interest in the system, and then another system gets used more, yeah? And it's in the using of the other system or actually letting the other system use you that there's a great loss of interest in self-centeredness, yeah? Self-centeredness cannot lose interest in self-centeredness. It can't. That would be more self-centeredness. Yeah. It can't. So the AA way has a way around those those warnings so that you can get the relief you need essentially right now without you being the doer of it. Yeah. Yes. It's great, man. It works. Yeah. Look yeah. at us. We're all fucking examples of it working one level or another. It's working. Yeah. yeah. There you go. And it will not, it won't stop working. It's it, grace oh. is a, is a, Grace is a working verb. There's not grace that's frozen and then maybe a drip, a drop comes out of it. It's a flow. It's available. It's like a jet stream. Just put your fucking hand in there and you'll be moved. Yeah. 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 So a great language. Yeah. True. All right, Hank. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Hank. Appreciate it. Next up, we have Jerome. Mike, I've got to end at 1130 today because uh, I got to deposit what? somebody at the airport. Deposit? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we have time for Jerome, huh? We have many. We have plenty of time. But I'm just okay. wanting, I'm just saying for myself. Yeah. Got it. Got um, it. All right. Hello. I'm Jerome. Uh, thanks, Paul and everyone uh, for participating. Um. This might be me just getting hung up on like semantics and wording, but basically I have found it unhelpful for me to, or at least the wording of like self is an illusion. And so if self is, or as you're saying here, if self is a process or a verb, then 
and I am not that thing, then who is powerless um, over alcohol? You. Me being... The action figure. Right. This actual corporal thing. Yes. Brain. You are powerless over alcohol. I don't know if you are or not. That's, you have to find that out. Yeah. I, well, I, I believe I am, but I don't know who I am in this sentence. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter, really. It matters just to see if that's the, the, the case. Yeah. If it's been proven to you beyond any doubt that if you drink, you don't know what's going to happen, then basically you've crossed the conditional line that uh, it needs to be addressed. Yes? Mm -hmm. yes. Now, you can address it in a lot of ways. You can be forced to address it. You can deny it and keep avoiding to address it. Or you can address it in a way of life or a design for living that many of us have been introduced to called recovery. Yes? But address it, you will. Either denying it, avoiding it, or admitting it. There's going to be, it's too big of an elephant in the room. It's going to have to be addressed. Yes? Right. Yes. Now, it doesn't matter if you're a who or a what. It doesn't matter. The it of active alcoholism needs to be addressed. Yeah? Yes. Okay. So, there you go. So, now, all right, you do the first step. You admit that you're fucked and that really the unmanageability in your life is you managing it, really. So, and that you, we're saying that's managing it isn't actually you. I don't care what you are. I care what you're not. And you're not that. You're not this mental idea of you. That's for sure. You're not because it's entertained by what you are. What you are is entertaining the mental idea of you. It is. Yeah. Or it wouldn't go, it wouldn't go anywhere. So basically, we're playing to an audience. You can't see the audience, but the audience is there, and the head knows the audience is there because it's playing to it all day, yeah? The head is playing to an audience. You don't see, I don't see your thoughts on your forehead, yeah? I don't. You're listening to a, you, you're in your own little theater, and something is talking to you, yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah informing you it's bringing up ideas it may be stuck in an idea about what it thinks you are from yesterday it's worrying about you for later yeah it's and when it comes to if you've ever had the wisdom of hearing about alcoholism then when it really wants to to drive you to drink it spends a lot of time trying to convince whatever that is that's the audience to do something yeah like Let's go and buy that vodka. Now, if that was you, you would just buy the vodka. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's not you. So you are the force that moves things. It wants to move that force by talking to you as you. Yeah. So it does. And it presents a lot of false evidence. And it's just hoping that some of it will appear real to the audience. And then the audience will react or respond and give up a position and let self make a decision. And then there you go. You're off on that run. Yeah. And we've been through all that. And it's time for that action figure, no matter what's running it, to be directed by something other than the head. That's for sure. And so this is the program of AA. Is, you know, the funny thing is, Jerome, I remember I spent two years in a program called Delancey Street, 85 to 87. Basically, my managing life always led me to having to be managed by others. Yes. So one other time I had to enter this program and they told me what to do for two years, 24 seven, pretty much every day. Now, when they were telling me what to do, I was upset quite a lot. I didn't want to do what they wanted me to do. And as Paul, I took a lot of, I was 
I was insulted and shit like that. But the beautiful thing, their view of me never deviated. They saw me as an addict. From the day I walked in to the day I, I uh, graduated, they saw me as an addict and they treated me as an addict and that fucking worked. Now, I was looking at how they treated me as Paul and I didn't like it. Yeah. And if I had if I had the way, where, ways and means, I would have split that place, but I had nowhere else to go. So I had to swallow. I didn't like it. But after two years of them running my life, I had to begrudgingly admit my life was better with them running it than it ever did with me running it. Yeah, that's a profound recognition. Yeah, it was. It was. These people, they had more. They had to let. They had the least amount of interest in me, and it worked better than the extreme amount of interest I had. <laughs> Because it was all being misdirected. And then theirs, theirs was being clearly directed. This guy called Paul is a fucking run-of-the-mill alcoholic addict. So we're going to treat him like that. And we know it's going to work because we've treated a lot of Pauls before for 20 or 30 years. So shut up, Paul, and just do what we tell you to do. And I did, and my life got better. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So... Right. Yeah. Don't worry who's there or what's there. Just see, tell the truth about where you find yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell the truth about it. And if you can't have somebody you trust, tell the truth about it. And then hopefully take it from there and admit your defeat. If you've been defeated. Yeah. 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 Close up the tents and just, uh, there you go. I mean, I had it all at once. I got struck sober. So it was it was almost like, you know, A.D. and B.C. The time, the before Paul and the after Paul were very distinct. I was just doing what I was doing, trying to get what I wanted to get. And then life just intervened and I got struck sober. Yes. Now, I humbly believe if I hadn't been introduced to this way of life that night, that would that miracle would have died on the vine because I needed a way of life. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Maybe people here don't. I needed a way of life. So I got whacked. And then I was introduced to AA that night out of with weird circumstances. I was brought to my first meeting, March 21st, 1988. And uh, I was in I, and that way of life. I did not get sober in AA. I've stayed sober in AA. Yeah. I got sober by the grace of something, but I stay sober with AA. Yeah, with a way of life. I needed a way of life. I mean, my way of looking at things doesn't work. So, yeah. So uh, that's the point. The idea of who is or what or this and that, I don't care. I care about relief. Yeah. My new basis in life is relief instead of irritability, restlessness, and discontent. Yes, it's a much nicer way to live. Yeah. Yeah. So, thanks. Anyone else, Mike? Or... Thank you. Yeah, we have one more question with Regina. Hi, Regina. Thank you so much. Hey. For, um... Good morning, Hello. everybody. Good to be here. First time. Paul just found you a week ago, and um, I a couple of things I really appreciate. You're really talking about the doer. I am not the doer. And I feel like maybe in the last week and a half, I'm getting a glimmer of really understanding what that means. And it happened over a cup of coffee that wasn't prepared the way I wanted it. And man, it just fucking blew the doors open. Oh, <laughs> the, the way it comes, the way it comes. Um, and also, thank you for this languaging of how our thinking is common, like everyone in here, we're all thinking the same thing. I just like these little pieces are making sense. I feel like little bits of light are really happening. And um, I've been sober now for over 16 years. And um that the way you speak about the habit of sobriety, I love that. I love that. So thank you. The last thing is this question. 
I feel like a lot of times I'm just the self watching the self. <laughs> there it is. Thank you. Yeah. See, but self can't watch anything. <clears throat> what it does is the head claims the watching and then calls itself. Yeah. So it uses our innate awareness to reinforce its storyline. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to see. So you don't look from it anymore. Because many of us have lived a life starting at that position, and that position was manufactured. Self-centered is self-centeredness is a manufactured position. And it's not very flexible. It doesn't flow with things. It's arthritic and uh it's dealing with what it can't understand is denial, disassociation neglect not a not uh distraction uh it doesn't work it's a failed system to rely on it is i mean i i had great faith in it and and oh yeah i can see what faith you talk about faith without works yeah the mental faith without us can't work so it wants to capture us because through us, its faith can work. And it can do incredible shit, man. I have seen sorrow upon sorrow on certain people. I have. I have seen uh, an unrelenting uh, pulverizing. And then at that point, you'll do anything for a secondary relief. Yeah, you will. I found myself there. I was willing to pay any consequence tomorrow to feel uncomfortable, to feel uh, relief right now. I would. I did anything. I would shoot coke with spit, knowing I was going to have an abscess. But I didn't give a shit. I, I wanted the relief so badly, I would do anything to get it for that moment. Yeah. And talk about knowing better. This thing can neutralize all knowing better because it's talking as you to you yeah it's its greatest camouflage its greatest function is the act of being identified it convinces the host that it's the host yeah and therefore there's an uninterrupted bondage of the parasite and the host because you're seeing the two as one you are you're seeing the two as one you're calling the parasite you, yeah? In that seeing the two is one is the bondage, yeah? Yeah, so I believe understanding or an inf like a invitation uh, can, bring can bring about a recognition because that's how it will happen with me, yeah? I'm just doing what I saw done in my life sharing it with others yeah i believe that we have enough evidence of of the defeat of self we don't need any more <laughs> we don't need any more it's time to recognize the value in that defeat because it shows you that you're not that which has defeated you because it always overplays its hand. It does. It just it just takes that extra inch. It just shows itself. You'll see the emperor has no clothes. You really will. You just need an understanding and a support mechanism. And in our humble way, we're trying to uh, 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 present a support of having these two talks a week. Yeah. So people can go like Hank and then come back and show up. And just so... Um, yeah, there's that support. All right. Hey, thank you. So I'm going to start saying goodbye. I've got to. Thank you, Regina. Real oh, quickly. Regina L., my Paul, friend. Real... What? Paul, real quickly. Christian has his hand up. He'd like to thank you. All right. Come on, Christian. Hey, Paul. How are you, man? I'm good. Good. Hey, 31 years yesterday. Thank you. 31 years. Wow. Fantastic, bro. And thank you specifically. I never thought uh, you were going to do it. I know. It's, it's, it's astounding, isn't it? Uh, uh, I always you, you were not easy on me, so it's good. Uh, you, I knew you would, man, because you had the, you had, uh, 
Yeah, you had had a sober assessment of your condition. <laughs> I did. I'm in the habit of being sober now, as you say. It's just, it's just follow the leader, yeah. and you're the leader. So, <laughs> no, I'm not the leader. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm being led. I'm being the led. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I love you, bro. I'm happy that you're yeah. yeah. It's great. It's been great knowing you. One of my most favorite times was taking your damn truck and shit to Minneapolis. <laughs> uh, with the, uh, with the hurry with the, the tornadoes. Yeah, well, we don't <laughs> have time to relate that story for all these people, but I'd love to one day just to sh sh tell them how you were shaking in your boots climbing underneath the uh, dashboard. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right i'll let you get on with it good to yeah, see you yeah, man. Thank you. good to see you man all right yeah. james in utah there you are james thanks for showing up i hope it's fueling uh recovery hank pleasure to see you again thanks for dropping in martin john s in florida I think we got Kathy. Hold on. We got Kathy in Cleveland. I think we got Alex. I'm not sure there. Mickey, I'll find out. Regina, nice to see you, Regina. I'm up in Novato. Joseph C. Kerry. Yeah, I'm not in an undisclosed okay. location, a compound. No, I'm in Novato, California. Kerry, nice to meet you, Kerry. Yeah. My name's Carol. I'm Kerry's in the bank. I'm, oh. I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm oh. saying goodbye for him. This, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, great to, great to see you. I met you one other time and yes. appreciate listening. All right. Thank you, Car Carol. Say hello to Carrie. I will. Michael, Stacy, as always. Are you going to be here today, Michael? Yeah, we have another meeting at 4.30. Yeah, 4.30. Today. It's not oriented in recovery, but it's about recovery. So 4.30 uh, Pacific time, we have a, it's the same Zoom. It's the same entrance to the meeting as this one. Bill C., Bill Churchman, nice to see you, Bill. Walter, as always. Chris B., Greg, in Minneapolis, I think, yes? Yes, yes. Roman, Roman Mueller, Rob in Kentucky, James Lebowski, John K., Liliana, I guess. I'm getting it somewhere near. Nice to see you. Oliver in Berlin. Mark Guess. Uh, let me see here. We got Reed. We got a phone number. Fletch. Yeah, Fletch, give me a ring tomorrow and stuff. Uh, give me a couple, a day or two. And yeah, I'll be, I'll be available. Marjorie, Chris B, Dennis, Emerson. Oh, Emerson, McGee. Uh, hey, Really nice to see everybody. If I missed you, I apologize. I hope to see some of you later, and uh, we'll be there. It's the Zen Bitch Slap event page has all the Zooms. Check it out if you like. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Thanks Paul. Michael. Thanks, everyone. Good to be here.